Polygram History. The Walmart Museum is currently under construction, and as folks flock down the street to the Heritage Lab, they're met with cutting edge technology of a historical Bentonville figure. Gears on gravel, Bentonville is the mountain biking capital of the world, and now there's an added focus on gravel riding. That story in minutes, plus a league of her own. The stars aligned in our city for the ninth annual Bentonville Film Festival. We sit down with the Academy Award winning actress who started it all, Gina Davis. That's our downtown conversation. Plus, we've got a little bit of bonus star power, all that and more coming up right now on Downtown Now. Hello, Northwest Arkansas. Welcome to another edition of Downtown Now. I am Aaron Nolan. I'm Dana Schlegenhaft, and you're joining us from the beautiful momentary in downtown Bentonville. I feel like I'm under the sea. Kind of are. Little Mermaid reference there at like the hidden city of Atlantis or something. But I need to know more about it. Do you want to play Did You Know? I love the game. All right, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what you see here at the momentary. The New York Times calls it history meets flamboyant fantasy. It's Firelay Baez's largest sculptural installation to date, and you've got to see it in person to understand the size of this exhibition, which revisits the century-long exchange of ideas and influence between Europe, the African continent, and the Americas. You can check it out from now at the Momentary until October 15th. From year to year, month to month, and even week to week, the landscape in downtown Bentonville continues to change, including the Walmart Museum and the iconic Five and Dime. But just down the street, you'll find an exhibit that is all the rage. It's Mr. Sam as a hologram. While construction work continues on the downtown square at this iconic museum, take a quick stroll down Main Street in Bentonville and you'll get to a new spot for retail history. Walmart! Who's number one? The customer always moves! It's where we test new technologies, this is the Walmart Museum Heritage Lab. From the front door, you're met with touch screens and interactive exhibits, not to mention that giant globe that is sure to catch your eye. But keep going, because then you'll see the bell of the ball. I was sure I was gonna be an insurance salesman. Or rather, the Sam of the Mart. We have Mr. Sam the Hologram in here, uh, who's proven to be really, really popular, our, our most popular exhibit. I have a cheer I believe whenever I visit a store. Our own Walmart cheer. Alan Dranow runs the museum. He admits at first he was skeptical of his holographic technology. Gee. What's that spell? Walmart! But now he understands it's cutting edge automation that is quickly becoming a signature piece in town. We thought like when you come in, you immediately see the globe. People see Sam because People come here to learn about Sam. No one will ever get closer to having a, 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 an interactive experience with Sam than you got here. I mean, we, we can't bring Sam back to life, but we can, you know, uh, have the, the hologram um, mimic that. Now, this hologram uses artificial intelligence and hours of closely protected words and speeches by Mr. Sam. It's driven by AI, but based on samples of thousands of clips of Sam's voice. Um, and, we, and we guard it very closely so that, you know, uh, Sam doesn't say anything that he wouldn't normally say. Everything that he says, he either said or would have said. I slipped on the rasker and the Hawaiian shirts and the ladies. It learns and it develops. And we have people who are experts on it here at the lab. Uh, Lisa is uh, one of them, and she uh, she's she's one of our experts at uh, you know bringing Sam to life, and and you know she, she realizes that there's so many things to learn, different triggers, different words to say to get Sam to talk about certain things. Give me a squiggly. Squiggly. Give me an M. M. Without a doubt, Walton has a place in the retail history books, but now. 
a new generation will come to know and appreciate Hologram Sam. I think that he would be happy about it. I think that he would uh, appreciate the technology behind it and how it could bring him to uh, people's consciousness. Um, proud, uh, I think he would be proud of the people that created it. All right, so when the new museum opens in mid to late 2024, Mr. Sam, as the hologram, will have his own theater right next to Sam Walton's iconic Medal of Freedom. We're pumped about that I'm new excited. museum. I am. We're watching its progress out our window. Hey, you know, Northwest Arkansas also has some amazing gravel and dirt roads that connect rural farms and communities all across the state. It's not downtown, but that's kind of the point. These connections offer unique and endless adventures on foot, bike, and horseback, away from the hustle and bustle of our thriving cities. Oz Gravel, launched in 2023, is a community for gravel riders, new and experienced, to learn about new routes, build their skill sets, and share experiences. Brooke Beerhouse checked it all out. Good to meet you. Hey Brooke, you too. How are you? I'm great. I mean, it's a beautiful morning and you picked a perfect spot for us to do one of my first gravel rides. Thanks so much. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you out here. There are tons of great places to go gravel riding in Northwest Arkansas. We're here in Pea Ridge this morning. It's going to be a great day. Gravel riding falls in this in-between kind of a center of the diagram of mountain biking and road cycling. With mountain biking, you're usually off on very specifically purpose-built trails. Road cycling, you're out on the roads with a bunch of cars. And gravel cycling is a nice mix of the two. Um, you tend to be out on a little bit more rural roads. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful sights, just like we see out here today. Uh, beautiful tree canopies, riding on gravel, whether that is big chunky rocks or it could be smaller, tighter packed, more like pea gravel. As the popularity of gravel cycling continues to grow rapidly, Oz Brands really wanted a way to celebrate that sport just as we have for mountain biking through Oz Trails. So Oz Gravel is really a way to celebrate and inspire gravel cycling in Northwest Arkansas. Do you notice that there are any barriers to entry for gravel riders? We do, a couple of them are knowledge and education and equipment, just like you mentioned. Yeah. Um, so for the knowledge portion of that, something that we're trying to do is just help be a resource and put information out there for people to read and take in. Um, one blog post we have is uh, all about getting ready for your first gravel ride. Oh. It will tell you some tips about um, how to set your bike up, what to bring with you, what to expect, um, some beginner friendly, routes that you can go on. And then for equipment, I think there's a little bit of a misconception that you have to have the perfect gravel bike to go out and enjoy a gravel route. But that's not really true. Road bikes and mountain bikes are very versatile. And if you ever need help figuring out how you want to set up your bike, go into your local bike shop. They'll be so happy to help you choose tires or if you need to change anything else up on your bike to make you more comfortable out on your route. They'll be more than happy to help. What makes this area, specifically Bentonville, um, so perfect? Well, in Bentonville, for example, just like we have mountain biking trails right off the square, um, I think you'll find that parallel with gravel cycling as well. A lot of the routes that are pre-curated and, and selected on ArkansasR3.com either leave from downtown mm. or it's just a few miles away from downtown where the, where the route actually starts technically. And so I think that's something that's really special. It's very close to town, very accessible. Not to mention Arkansas has four beautiful distinct seasons. Yes. Um, it's not like that everywhere. And so every quarter you'll, you'll see something new. And right now as we head into summer, everything is beautiful and lush and green. Um, and just in a few months, we'll start to see everything changing and it's always just such a beautiful sight. In the next five years or so, what does an ideal community for Oz Gravel look like? So there are a couple things that we're hoping for to see success for Oz Gravel. One of them is to see people who are inspired by Oz Gravel, the brand, and to go out on their own accord to enjoy gravel cycling, whether that's by themselves or with a group. And then also to foster this community that cyclists are proud to be a part of and like I mentioned earlier spreading the joy to others and um, just helping us grow this incredible community.
All right, I know you're ready to go gravel riding. I always. You can start your adventure. It is OzGravelNWA.com. Up next, we spoke with Gina Davis. Very you know cool. who it that is. It was here. It was actually at the Momentary. It was. And we talked to her about year nine of the Bentonville Film Festival and what you can expect for their 10th anniversary. That's next year. That's next. Wow. The Bentonville Film Festival returned to our city for its ninth annual event in June. The fest focuses on promoting inclusion in all aspects of entertainment media. Now this year it showcased over 75 films and welcomed over 200 guests to Bentonville. The programming engaged thousands of members right here in our community with free family events, unique experiences, red carpet events, and of course movie premieres. The festival was launched back in 2015 by Academy-winning, award-winning actor Gina Davis, and you may know her from roles in Thelma and Louise, Beetlejuice, you can't miss, she was in League of Their Own, but possibly her most influential role may be as the champion of underrepresented voices in Hollywood. We were the only media outlet to sit down one-on-one -on -one with Gina Davis in this downtown conversation. Hi, Gina. How Hi. are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm good. How does it feel to be back in Bentonville? We're at the Momentary. So happy to be back. I always love to come here. We're going to dive right in. Okay. And we're going to start with last Friday. I watched you on the Today Show, and I'm not going to ask you about a Thelma and Louise sequel. Yes, that came up. The question came up, will there be a sequel? <laughs> hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't... I think very few people would ask that question. <laughs> we laughed. But I put it, to bed. Yes, I put it to bed. You handled it perfectly. Thank you. So I do want to ask about Thelma and Louise, and yeah. specifically this theme of, of you finding your voice. Right. And, and that movie helped you with that, and especially working with Susan Sarandon. Exactly. Can you talk about that? Exactly. So, uh, you know, I had felt like I was, you know, uh, pretty evolved, pretty self confident um, before I made that movie, but then meeting Susan from minute one when I met her and seeing how she moves through the world was such an education to me because I think I hadn't really spent significant time with a woman who says what she thinks without apologizing for it beforehand. Because I was, I mean, you know, I literally would start things by saying, I don't know if this is a good idea, it's probably stupid, maybe I shouldn't say this, but, you know, and it was just the way I moved through life. But Susan just says, why don't we do this? And, and it literally took me, I was stunned, you know, and just to spend three months with her, and now we've been friends for 30 years, but uh, to see, that she just feels comfortable saying what she thinks without qualifying it was was revolutionary and really changed my life. You know, I had to learn how to be comfortable saying, let's do this, you know. And, no. uh, and it's not about being confrontational in any way. It's just about feeling comfortable expressing your opinion and not being embarrassed to do so. Yeah. We all need a friend like that I know, in our lives. I know, I know. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit. Yep. You're, you have a two-year-old child at this point in, right. in life and you're watching television and you notice in these children's ship programs, the boys are doing the cool stuff and the girls are cheering them on. And I will tell you, Gina, we are not cheerers. Right, right. <laughs> uh, you know, and it was from the very first thing we watched, I realized when she was two, hey, we could start watching preschool shows mm -hmm. and little kid stuff. And uh, the very first thing we sat down to watch, she's in my lap, and I picked it because I thought this would be a very good introduction. And I immediately was like counting how many male characters and how many female characters, and I was floored to see that there were far more male characters than female. And then I saw it everywhere. All, you know, the Teletubbies are, are gender balanced. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but they are. But there was tremendous inequality. And it was in the movies made for kids and TV and everywhere, videos. And um, it made me think, now that I could see it through kids' eyes, I had no idea that kids' entertainment would be imbalanced. And, uh, it made me realize that, well, so wait a minute. We're, in effect, training kids from minute one to see that boys are more important. Mm -hmm. 
and they just take it in, they just absorb it, you know. So I thought, if we could change what kids see first and show them that boys and girls share the sandbox equally, I feel like it would have a huge impact on how they view each other when they grow up. So that began the Gina Davis Institute in, on Gender and Media. Mm -hmm. And I thought, talk a little bit about that, but also that it's data driven. I think that's so important. Yes, yes. So uh, that was my idea from the beginning. Well. I didn't attend to launch an institute about this at first. I just brought it up with anybody I knew or talked to or in the industry. I would say, have you ever noticed how few female characters there are in movies made for kids? And every single person said, no, 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 that's not true. That's not true anymore. That's been fixed. And they would even name a movie with one female character as proof that it was now equal. So I was like, okay, this is completely unconscious. They do not know they're doing it, so if I get data to prove that this is what's happening, that should have impact them. And, uh, and so that's exactly what happened. I got all this data and then went privately to all the studios and networks and everybody said, I know you didn't know this, but here's the gender representation. And they were horrified because people that make kids entertainment want to do right by, they want to do right by kids, they just didn't know they weren't. So, um, so we've been able to get tremendous change happening. We want to talk, we talked a little bit off camera about this, if you see it, you can, you can be, be it. it. Right. And you have a fantastic example. Right, right, so uh, Fox asked us, um, maybe a year or two ago, uh, they were curious what, um, from, that, from the show The X-Files, mm -hmm. What impact did the Dana Scully character have on women going into science, technology, engineering, and math? So we said, oh, great, we'll, we'll find out. And it turned out that 63% of women currently working in STEM name Dana Scully as the reason. This is one character on one TV show, and the majority of women going into, into STEM fields uh, cite that character. So, I mean, imagine the impact if we really showed half of women doing half of all the things, you know. It's just a ripple effect. It would have such a big ripple effect. So that, to me, that was the most fascinating thing. It is. Um, so, we're going to jump ahead a little more. Um, you decide to launch a film festival. <laughs> right. And you bring it to Bentonville, Arkansas. Right. And I like to ask you about that first initial reaction when you tell people, well, no, we're, we're going to do it in Bentonville. <laughs> What did they say? I know, I know. People are a little like, are you from there? Uh, like, no, no, no. But it was because Walmart was our founding sponsor mm -hmm. and suggested, why don't we have it here? And, uh, you know, once you come here, you're like, oh my God, this is such a perfect place for a film festival. We, if, we, if we were going to build a town to have a film festival in, it would be Bentonville. Although, there were no movie theaters when we launched a not. film festival. But uh, now, now there are more. But uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great place, and people are so incredibly supportive here and uh, really care about, about all this, and uh, so it's meant a lot to us to be here. This is year nine. You're, what's, what's going on for year 10? What do you uh, see as the future of Bentonville Film oh, Festival? Well, we're very excited about the 10th anniversary, you know. Uh, uh, I, I mean, it's kind of amazing it's all gone by so fast, but um, one of my goals is to really deck the town out because driving through, you don't really see, like, there's a big film festival going on here, but next year I'd like to have some banners and uh, maybe giant inflatable letters BFF in the town square or something like that. You, know? you call me. Call me early. Yeah. I'll help make it happen. Good help? Yeah, we're doing it. That's so awesome. <laughs> we're doing it. Yeah, great. Doing it. Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us. My pleasure. And dates are not set just yet for the 10th annual event, but you can check their website, bentonvillefilm.org, and they'll announce it there as soon as they have the dates set. Up next, we're not done, showing you a little Hollywood glamour right here in Bentonville. That's next. There's no doubt the Bentonville Film Festival is a huge draw here in Bentonville. But Gina Davis wasn't the only star on the red carpet. Check this out. Hey, 
Hi everyone, we are here at the 9th Annual Bentonville Film Festival at the Momentary in downtown Bentonville. Hello! <laughs> Bentonville, downtown, shout out. Hi, downtown Bentonville. We're going to see a hug downtown. Oh. Oh. Enjoy. Bentonville, downtown. I really love this little town of Bentonville. Watch out for traffic. <laughs> Watch where you're going. Actually, though. Obey the laws of driving. Rules of the road with the bikes. Rules of the road with the bikes. Yes. Just quoting. And Kim Jong wasn't the only judge from the mass Singer in Bentonville just this month. We were at First Friday. We noticed Robin Thicke enjoying our July First Friday right here in downtown Bentonville. And Dana, you and I both got a chance to meet him. He was a solid guy enjoying time with his family, but didn't mind stopping for a few pictures. He loved First Friday, and apparently he loves visiting our region. So maybe we'll see him again soon. We're working on that. We are, we are. In the meantime, check out our YouTube page because there's more stories, shout outs, and all kinds of, kinds of fun. Check out Downtown Now on YouTube, or you can grab your phone and scan the QR code. I'm gonna give you a second, another second. Scan it now on your screen. I heard the clicks, All right. everybody's doing it. And make sure to subscribe to get updates from us. That is our show for this Sunday. Make sure you join us right back here for Downtown Now next Sunday, 10.30, you wanna do it again? Sure. Next Sunday morning, right here on Campus M. See you then. The sun is 93 million miles away. The least we can do is give it a warm welcome each morning. <laughs>